What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, Big Ben, and you're tuning into another episode of Let's Go to Church Gospel Show with your boy, Big Ben. You know, I'm right here. I look good. So fresh and so clean. <laughs> but guys, this is season eight, episode five of Let's Go to Church Gospel Show. Guys, like I said, on every show, um, i surprised I've been doing this that long, eight years for this show. Um, my humble beginnings, long, long time ago. Yeah, when I was 17 years old, uh, wow. So I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be able to be in the industry. And um, yeah, God is so amazing. So guys, we got a national recording artist. Let me tell you, this woman of God, her resume. Um, and she had me flabbergasted, guys. Y'all know I, I don't get easily flabbergasted, but she had me flabbergasted, for real. Like she had me, I had no words. She just blessed me that good. Let me tell y'all. Let me let, let, let me just say, Miss Joanna Hell McGill, how you doing? I don't I don't know what to say because I'm sitting here like, who you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, who you talking about? Talk about me, <laughs> little old me. Let me tell Hi. you. Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. She's just a sweet spirit. I, I'm so glad I'm be able to interview her. And I was like, you know what? Like I said, I'm going to keep on saying it. She had me flabbergasted. And I'm not easily flabbergasted. This woman of God don't. Like, and, what, and what part? Like, what what part? Like, I, what it's part? A it's a lot. Because I listen to a whole bunch of your songs. I listen to all, pretty much majority of them. Because you got a lot out there. Look, this woman of God has been out there for years. Years. She passed a decade now. I was hitting... I was hitting for such a time as this, you oh, know, so <laughs> I feel don't like make it. me do it. Don't you threaten me with a good time now. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Wow. Yeah. So when I was talking to Big E earlier, no, you're Big E, Eric, the other, other E. <laughs> I was talking to him earlier. He was like, you know, you really been out here a long time. I'm like, yeah, but I've, I've been doing everything independently. Um, Just, it's hard trying to find good representation. Right, you know, right. because you got to really represent me. Who you are in public reflects me as well. You know, so I don't, I know who I used to be. Right. I don't right. need who you currently are. I don't need your representative. Give me the real you. Okay, take that mask off. Take it off. Give it to me. Halloween is in October, not April. So, <laughs> <laughs> come on. You know, but it, it was it was a challenge finding good representation. Um, so I just did it all myself. So after I won, I was the first winner of the Walmart Next Gospel Superstar competition wow. um, that took place at Essence Festival. So after I won that, I had my first single written and produced by Diedrich Hatton. And then I opened for Diedrich and Yolanda at the time during the family reunion. And so with that, um, I, I won that. And then I was able to do a jingle for the time during the morning show. So we did the jingle entitled I Could Do Anything, and we turned the jingle into a single. So everybody loved the single, yes, um, man, and man. that was my first Billboard charting song that I had, I Could Do Anything. And so I just took that open door and just, like, kept going. I was nervous because there was there was really no plan. Right. Essence ain't have no plan. You know, these competitions, you see – you see the the Sunday best. You see, I've done Sunday best three or four times. I've done The Voice three or four times. I've oh, done American God. Idol three or four times and won nothing, went nowhere. And I was done. Like, I was done with all of that. But that old mother from the church, hmm. she said, baby, let me tell you something. Come on. I said, ma'am, she said, the Lord said to tell you one more competition. I said, the Lord ain't tell me that. So I ain't doing it. <laughs> she said, Joanna, you hear what I say now? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, so I'm going to ask him to do it for your unbelief. I say, oh, okay. <laughs> she she booked me. She did. <laughs> she booked me. Got me right on together. Yes. And with that, that's when I won the competition. And I just took that open door and just just walked on in it, you know, walked on in it. Now, um, right. I was a praise and worship leader at my church for, oh, Jesus, a long, long time. 
Um, but once I started doing my own thing, promoting my own stuff, I couldn't be at church on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. I was the praise and worship leader. I was the assistant to the pastor. I was the finance. I was the media. I was the camera. I was the sound. I was, I was, I was it. And I couldn't do it anymore. So you she know. has a whole bunch of hats, guys. Let me tell y'all. Do sound just like me because, you know, I grew up in the church and everything. Uh, my grandfather was the head deacon. My grandmother was the uh, treasurer. My mom was over the youth department. My aunt was over the choir director, the choir ministry. My uncle was over the music. He was at church every day. Oh, yeah. So I was at church every day. We went to everything. <laughs> every day. Yeah. So I understand. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot. So yeah, once I started, once I started doing uh, my concert series entitled Grown and Save Night Out, I just wanted to give the Christians a new outlook on things that to let them know it's okay to be saved and still have fun. Right. And so I'd bring myself in some other artists, another national artist, and then some comedians and we'll do a concert. We have our VIP experience and it was always a sellout. You know, right. it was, it was a blast. And so once I started that, I couldn't really do church like that. So I had to find the find time, a later church time to be able to accommodate what I needed to do. So it all worked itself out. We got online service now. So online services that work I, out. You know, I can't forsake the assembly. I got to I got to go and be I need to be in there, you right. know. And online is great. At times I appreciate online, but it's just something about being in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Um corporate worship is some it's 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 different, you know, it's different. Cause I could go up in the house, but I did be close. I thought I will go up in a minute. In the house, see there? Ah, come on, come on, <laughs> I, come on. But so it's just something about being in the house of God. Yes. So we need to know, like back in back when you was a kid. Now, did you did you know that you wanted to be a singer, or is it something that you was brought up in? Do you come from a house full of singers? Because I feel like you do. So and my mother is like. She's a singer. We used to do like five churches a Sunday because she oh. sang with these quartet groups. <laughs> she sang with them quartet groups, you know, so they would always right. they hit them churches and get them church plates after service. The fish fry and homemade yes. ice cream. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. A little cake. We had a little and a red punch. A red punch. Red. red punch. And so I think I was about eight years old. My uh, great uncle passed and we were all in Connecticut. And uh, that was that uh, Friday night wake service that they would have. Right. And they had been to they had been to the to the funeral home and they didn't did whatever they were gonna do. So we were back at the house hanging out. And Tevin Campbell, can we talk came on? And I just I had on my little Japanese uh, outfit my sister bought for me while she was stationed in China. I still remember it was blue. My mama <laughs> couldn't comb hair, so my hair was a mess. She tried though, but she sucked. And so, um, <laughs> and I was just standing there and I just burst out and just started singing the song. And you know how the room get quiet and you know, everybody looking at you. Right. And I was like, oh, they actually heard me. Right. I guess I could sing. And that's kind of how it came about. Then my mom started bringing me to the rehearsals with them all the time. And we with them old ladies and I'm like, this don't even feel right. Why, why I got to be in here? And y'all like bigger than me. And I don't <laughs> well, I got to be in here. Yeah. And then for my sixth grade graduation, I was tasked with learning a song in 24 hours to deliver the song for the graduation. And it was Terry Ellis's Wherever You Are or whatever. And I think he rewrote it to Whatever I Need. Mm -hmm. And I apparently killed the song because my brother jumped up. That's my sister. He <laughs> ran out crying. And I was like, I guess I really hit that note. Because everybody was standing up clapping and I was like, I guess I did all right. right. So that's when I first came into the realization of I can really sing. Yeah. Let me tell y'all, everybody has this good, humble beginnings, but you know, hers is really fun. <laughs> and I know she won't never forget it because, you know, that's part of her, her history. I still have the VHS tapes. Come on. 
<laughs> BHS, you heard me. BHS, okay. I'm telling you, let me tell you, uh, this woman of God has so much under her. Um, she just told me that she was an actress too. So let's talk about your, your acting career. Come on. So I first, my first national TV premiere um, was for Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. Mm -hmm. I was the black mother, whatever. Um, and so I didn't even audition for that role. Wow. I had previously done an event here at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Mm -hmm. And somebody reached out to them, asked if they knew a singer, and they just referred me. And they, for all singers, it is very important to be visual. You got to have your website, have all the things. Because they asked me, for, I was already preparing for ready when ready came. I wasn't right. getting ready. So right. they asked me for all of it. I had it to present. And they were like, okay, so come to the studio and record. Right. Where's the audition? Yeah, there is none. This is for you. And I recorded it. A couple of weeks later, I went on set. I was I was like, oh, okay, we're just going on set. No, this was on set. I had an assistant that was waiting on me hand and foot. I was like, okay, um, I don't need you to do all that. This is a little weird. They was like, oh, no, it's okay. I was like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to embrace this. Right. Because I'm just thinking, I'm just going. No, they were there. And all the people that were in the scene, they were like, so that's really you singing? I was like, yeah. My God, that's amazing. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. I didn't think anything of it. Right. Okay. So I did that. And then I was in, I was the guest pastor on BET Sacrifice. That was last year, I think it was. BET Sacrifice, yeah. I've done several stage plays here in New Orleans. Uh, I just did one this past Saturday in Georgia entitled Mama Don't Count Me Out. Um, and so now they want to take this one on a tour. So possibly doing it again on Mother's Day back in LaGrange, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, I had one of the leading roles. And it was a, it's a pretty cool production. Pretty cool production. So I'm excited about all of the acting stuff. I do commercials. I was in several commercials. I heard they were airing in Florida. Um, so I don't know. People call me all the time. Yeah, I just saw you on TV. I'm like, oh, really? Or they'll see me in the street. Weren't you in that? I was like, hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of people don't even get that opportunity. So th that's how you know you're favored and you're blessed because a lot of people don't get that opportunity because some people can't remember words like long, long lyrics. That's me. Listen, <laughs> that play I just did, I had to learn 25 pages in a week and a half. Because oh, the last girl, whatever happened, and they were like, yeah, you're up. I was like, oh, okay, no problem. But I forgot I was already shooting a production the, that first week, so I didn't have time to look at it. I didn't really start looking at it until the Friday before I left that Tuesday. And I had to be ready on set Thursday off book. So it was a challenge, but um, I got it done. Guys. I like working well under pressure. You do? Amazing. Yes. You know, honestly, me, uh, depends. Depends on the subject. Cause some some things I don't like being under pressure. Cause I got to know what I got. I got to know before going into it. I I'm sorry. I got to know, and I know. Listen, how to... I just recorded another song, and as I was heading to the studio, it was like an hour and ten minute drive. I realized I didn't have the second verse written. Oh, I'm wow. driving. I'm like, okay, I'll just drive. I'll write it while I drive. And by the time I got to the studio, it was done. It's done. That's a gift. <laughs> I don't know what nobody said. That's a gift. You gotta say it like that gift. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. That's a gift. Let me tell wow. you, what are some hobbies you like to do outside of ministry and outside of your everyday career? So I actually have a degree in public health, health sciences, physical therapy. Right. I have my master's in public health. I have a doctorate in sacred music. Um, I was a health inspector for over 10 years for the state of Louisiana. So my private practice, I still teach and coach businesses, the importance of food safety. Mm -hmm. I also have <laughs> deliver us some evil. Yeah, that was me. Yes. Um, okay. so we old, have, you huh? old, sir? no, just the, uh, mm -mm, CDC, CDC. Okay. You know what OSHA is, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I now on the. Private sector side, when I worked in the private sector, 
I did a couple of OSHA inspections for some of our clients. So I've had the best of both worlds, the private and the public and the federal side. I was a food and drug um, inspector as well. And I was also an environmental health scientist for the Department of Epidemiology and Toxicology. So I've, <laughs> I've done a few things, um, but it always led back to music. That's not a um, aside from my rental property, I lay tile. I hang sheetrock, I paint, I pressure wash, give me a screwdriver, we'll change this light fixture, this switch in here, we'll hang some lights. I have a t-shirt business, um, I have a printing business, um, and I just like to do, I like to house watch. That's weird, I like to drive around and just watch houses, because they're beautiful. You got me flabbergasted. Like, when do you have time to house watch? Yeah, right. Do you have so any when I when I when I want to take a minute and just get away, I do Amazon deliveries and I do Walmart deliveries. Right. And I right. deliver the packages and the groceries and sing to the people. That that gives me my space. Right. And it helped me pay to get my hair and my nail done. <laughs> do you have any kids? I have one daughter. She's twenty one. She's a junior at Jackson State University. Right. And I have another daughter who's 14, and I have a dog, and I have a husband. Four. Wow. How do you do all that, all this, and still trying to manage to raise a 14-year-old, a dog, and your husband? You with your husband? It's just, how do you do it all? By the grace of God, I have no idea. I don't. I I don't I don't plan which I probably should, but I I can't because my day changes. I could get up and have one thing planned and my phone ring and go a whole nother way. Right. So it I don't know. Well I don't know. Since going to this, I'm gonna segue to a different question. This next question is when did you know that you knew that the Lord is your savior? Tell them tell me about that time when you first got saved. Because some people get saved multiple times, because I I did it twice, three, four, four, five times. I got saved multiple times. Cause, cause I fell short of his glory and I had to get saved multiple times. <laughs> Listen, oh Jesus, I want to say I was this before I was married. I was in, in an abusive relationship, and he really, literally tried to kill me. Um, he choked me until I was un, I was passing out, and I was like, God, please help me. And right before. I passed out. I was kicking and I kicked the window out of my car and I thought I was dead. Like I, I thought that was the end. Well, and then I, I guess I came to and, um, I was coughing and I set up and I was like, you just tried to take me away from my child. And it was like, you could see the, the demonic spirit in his eye. He was so angry. I wasn't dead. And I was like, yeah, I got to get out of this situation. I got to get out. I got to get out. And I was only there out of convenience. I was in college. I had my daughter. My daughter stayed with his mom during the day. I went to school during the day. But I never told anybody what was going on. Um, oh, but when he came to the beauty salon and cut up. Mm. You don't, don't cut up in the salon, sir. He cut up in the salon. Took my baby took my keys to my car, took, and I called my mom. I was like, come get me. She had just pulled up in Mississippi at her house. She said, I'm on my way. And she came back. And it was, it was a task and a struggle that night. I finally was able to get my stuff from the house the next day. And I never looked back since. Never oh, looked back. That was clearly God right there yes, to let was. me know he was with me because uh, I was supposed to be dead. I felt life leave. I was dead. But God, come on, come on, walking miracle, walking miracle. Walk and I've and I've seen him since then, you know. And he's tried to talk. Bless yeah. you. May the Lord watch. May the Lord keep you. May His face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. Come on. We not yeah. fit to we not fit to pacify it, sir. Good day. You know not to talk to you because you know you got bless your, your heart and all your parts. That's your husband now, so your husband can handle that. <laughs> not if I don't do it first <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh 
So that that's a um that's a uh, testimony of itself. Yeah. Testimony. Um a man, testimony to the fact that you're only 25 years old. Because you said you started when you were 17 and it ain't been for eight years. Um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I seeing you makes me want to do more. I'm not doing enough. No, I feel like I, because I already do a lot. Like a lot of people I feel do. Like I haven't done enough. I don't even feel as I've scratched the surface of what God has for me. I just I feel like there's just so much more. Right. Um, and if I would stop running from the call and fully embrace everything, um, I think I'd be a lot further. God has told me several times over the past couple of weeks, you are the holdup. What you do with that when God tells you you your own hold up? What that mean? Right. And he just says it again. You are the hold up. So I need to get out of my own way. You supposed to be preaching. To I'm sorry. You supposed to be preaching. You know, I'm a that what they say. Preacher slash prophetess slash everything else. You know, so but I know what comes with that. Apostle basically. I know what comes with that and embracing all of that is I need to know what it look like, but you can't. That ain't faith. Right. That ain't faith. So I gotta I'm I'm rebuking my own self right now. Shut up, Joanna. I'm rebuking my <laughs> own self. <laughs> but sometimes I understand because it could be scary. Because you yeah. don't you don't want to because I'm I'm kind of in that stage too. You know, the Lord's telling me, okay, you need to do that. You need to work. No, because, you know, there's a bad stereotype out there for pastors and stuff. And I was like, I don't want no toys. And I don't even like titles. I don't even like titles. Thank you. I understand where you're you're coming from because I'm in that stage right now. But yeah. eventually we both got to do what we got to do. We don't have a choice. You yeah. know, you keep running. Right. You're going to still circle right on back. And as long as it took you to get back, you could have just took the straight line. Yeah. But you wanted to take a detour, you know, hit all these bumps. Right. But I got to do more. Now, you persuade me to do more now. I got to do more. And I already do a lot already. And I feel like uh, sometimes I be, I do a lot. So I have I have a marketing company. I have okay. a field servicing company. Okay. I have a uh, radio station. I have a um, three podcasts. I have, and this show's on TV. I have, this one's the only one on TV. I also have, I sing in a choir. I travel and sing. <laughs> um, I do graphics. I do okay. videography. Um, yeah, your flyer was really clean. I told him that when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a clean flyer. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you know the stuff I get with my face on, I'm like, no, we'll do it. Thank yeah, you. It's just, it's just a lot of hats I got to handle, if that makes sense. And I'm just like, and then my eight different clients I got now. I got eight clients. Eight clients I'm trying to do. Uh, work on their stuff and marketing their stuff. Radio service, radio servicing their stuff. And then trying to do my everyday life. I'm still young. I'm what everyday to... life? That ain't your life? <laughs> this is my life, but <laughs> and, then I got a nine... life. and I got a 9 to 5 job. I work for the government. I do, uh, I cook for the army. Cook for the soldiers and their families. I recently just did an event um, at the Army base in, oh, Jesus, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They had a uh, a prayer breakfast. Those soldiers that were killed recently, wow. where was it? It was three of them. Mm -hmm. And that was actually their unit. Wow. And they brought me in to sing and do the prayer breakfast. And the man, he told me, he said, Joanna, he said, I first encountered you at the House of Blues Gospel Brunch five years ago. Wow. He said, and I remembered your voice. And I said, whenever we have an event, I have to have her here. I said, sir, when was this? He said, five years ago. Me and my wife came down for a wedding and we were waiting for the cruise to take off. Right. And we stopped by the gospel brunch at the House of Blues. And there you were. He said, and I've never forgot you. That's crazy. And that's the thing. A lot of people remember faces, and especially since you, I, I can tell that you're very not hard to work with. Um, you're very. I don't like. To, I don't like to be that person. Just because I don't. I don't. I don't have demands and all that. I just just give me some water, 
some room temperature water, and some throat coat with some echinacea, and I'm good. And a towel. Yeah. But you know, these are, I'm just going to be straight up because I have mm -hmm. so many artists I worked for, worked with uh, from Michelle Prather all the way to, I uh, actually man managed Michelle Prather about a year ago. But yes, I worked from her, her caliber, and you know, she's like mid mainstream down to uh, straight up anybody, anybody you can think of. Any, right. Yeah. So, um, some of them could be a handful. Some artists can be a handful. You can't even work with them. Um, they be able to, they just want a list of requirements. I'm just like, and I- You only gonna be here for 30 minutes, baby. You got a 30 minute set. Go sit down. I want I want a fruit basket with uh, pineapples, apples, and strawberries. You and need, you need to go eat all that. You gonna throw it, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna eat it. <laughs> what is you doing? I I need Fuji water or I need uh what's it called uh, uh this different types of water I want a great I seen somebody ask for great value water but you know that just hey let me tell you a little secret <laughs> I used to work in a manufacturing plant to inspect those plants <laughs> great value is the name brand it's just a different packaging <laughs> it's the yeah, same yeah. thing you literally. It's the same thing. It's just packaged with their label. Right. But you still have that great value product inside of the expensive bottle. Yes, ma'am. Let's I'll go pay pennies. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about your 40th birthday coming up. Guys, let me tell y'all. She got I would I'm gonna show the flyer to y'all on the when I do the record everything. But this flyer, let me tell y'all, she she's bedazzled up. She's bedazzled so, up. I'm the bling queen. Everybody knows Joanne is going to have something on that blings. It's just not. That's just what's going to happen. That's that's right. that's that's just me. Uh, so the decade upgrade celebration is happening April twenty seventh, uh, twenty twenty four, six p.m. at Dillard University, which is my alma mater, um, okay. in the student union building in the ballroom. And so, I figure you only make forty once. Right. So I wanted to call it a decade upgrade. I don't want to call it a birthday. I don't, it's a decade upgrade, you know. Yes. So um, I'm launching my shoe line. Mm. Let me tell you. I got to show you. I, Look at that. Y'all going to see it on the time, but I might cut this part out, but y'all see. <laughs> so, like, I'm known for my shoes. And I was like, why keep wearing somebody else's shoes when everybody know you for your shoes? Right. Design and create your own. So I created the birthday shoe. There's another shoe entitled Oh That Girl. Because when you look at that shoe, you're just like, oh, that girl right there. <laughs> There's uh, Let's Strut. Right. Watch, watch Me Work. That shoe. You got that great shoe. Some men now. We gotta get some shoes for men. You gotta get us some Converse or something. I told my husband he can create the men's line because that that's for a man to do. I mean, I don't. I've been to put pink on y'all shoes or something. And we can you have know, a street of pink, but not all pink. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So um, I did tell him we need to do a men's line, but I'm I'm just starting off now with about five pair and then for the older ladies that can't wear the high heel we give them the little kitten heel i oh, named yeah. that shoe the regina after pastor regina from the church because oh. all she wears is kitten heels i was like baby this is for you because i will never wear it honey i i will not mm -mm. that's the Just usher shoe right there don't you used to wear the usher that shoe. is definitely the you know i should have made a white when they put a gold bar on the crumb across the top I should have did that. And call this the Usher. The Usher. I'm telling you, get you the one Usher. like that. The Usher, because they used to wear them long black skirts, and then they got that mm. little button-up shirt, and they got a little name tag right there. They chop, they chop a cap on the head. <laughs> chop a cap. <laughs> Is that the name for the, 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 I don't, that might need I don't to be the I don't know. I've always known it as the chop a cap. That's what I, I got. Put the Lacombe in it. Put the Lacombe in it and the little lace Stuff is hanging out, you know. You look like a nurse hat, like the nurses back in the day <laughs> in the seventies. I was exactly like, what it looks like, 
I was like, guys, let me tell y'all, she got so much going on. She got a cruise with Miss Joanna. Oh, geez. So I I wanted to do something else different. I like to go against the grain. I don't want to go with the same thing everybody going. I like to do what I want to do. And so I didn't want to spend Thanksgiving here with dry turkey and boring unseasoned food um, from people. I didn't want to go house hopping. And so I said, how? How about we just take a cruise for the entire week of Thanksgiving? The kids are out. I said, and I can do a concert and a comedy show on the cruise. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay. It's entitled Cruising with Joanna. Uh, it's November 25th through the 30th. We're oh, going wow. to Cozumel and Progresso. Mexico. So, yeah. And it leaves from New Orleans. The cruise is only eight seventy seven for five days. That includes your concert admit, admittance. That includes your T-shirt, your bag. You get some onboard cruise credits. Like we're gonna be doing a bunch of things while we're on the boat. So come hang out with Joanna the week of Thanksgiving. You and your family. Now the boat is almost sold out. So I can't guarantee you gonna get that same rate by the time you know y'all decide y'all want to call me and book it. But we'll see if we can work out. I need to go ahead and book now. Go ahead and book. I'm telling y'all, she got many hats. She can do some towel in your house. She can do, she can do, she probably could put some carpet on. She can, uh, she can nail some pictures on the wall. Cause some of y'all, y'all be irritating me, post some pictures on the wall and it'd be cricket and it irritates me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and you guys said croak, it, croak it. That's how you say it down here in the South. Croak it. <laughs> help, Lord, help. I, I'm sorry. I, I know you got the, the the doctor's degree. I don't have a doctor's degree. Oh, no, <laughs> and so I don't speak propers. <laughs> I I I don't I don't talk about that unless I'm asked. Then I'll lay it all out for people because I'm not the braggadocious type. Like I and I get in trouble about that all the time. Why don't you talk about yourself? What for? I walk in the room and it's gonna speak for me. I don't need to say a word. She's the, she's the, she's trying to be the light in the dark. I've learned to be seen and not heard. So that's why I did the um something they did Stellar Awards weekend. I think it was about two years ago. Right. And um I had on a reversible an iridescent reversible sequence overall set. Wow. What kind? with my bling shoes and I did my songs or whatever. And after I was done, the guy was like, there's something about you that's different. He said, but what I'm going to remember, your voice was amazing. Great. But I'll never forget your outfit. He said, I'll oh. never forget it. He said, so I can see you somewhere else. And I'm going to put your face with that outfit. I was like, Oh, how cute. So that's why for me, it's important to make sure I'm always standing out. You going to remember me. You yeah. will. You will. I did a Christmas party one year at this lady's house and I made sure I said, first of all, I don't know y'all. Y'all don't know me, but by the time I finish, you will know my name. You're going to know me. And by the time I was done, it was Joanna. Joanna. I was like, yeah, that's, that's just, a, I don't, I don't know how I'm able to just command a room when I sing and when I speak, I have no idea, but if you are not changing the atmosphere, when you go in there, something is wrong. Yeah, I don't do stale atmospheres. I'm gonna oh, shift that thing. <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly, I'm kind of the same way, but you know, a lot because I'm already tall, so people already know me. Okay, Big Ben, you're tall. You're six four, but I am known for hats, so I got a different types of hats. Mm hmm. I see that number twenty two. Is that like the Bulls hat? That's Jordan uh, little hat right there. It was a hat that came with the shirt. Amen. <laughs> you go to City Trade, you know they get the shirts connected with the uh, shirt. You know, I haven't been there so long. Oh my. <laughs> no, it's, I guess I don't know. It's yeah, Chicago Bulls. I'm not into sports, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. But I'm more like okay, like I said, I'm more like a like I come from a singing background. So singing's pretty much been around me all my life. So yeah. classical singing. Uh, I done classical singing in high school. Uh, I'm into 
operas. I can I like going to operas. I like to go to musicals. Um, and I like to eat. Who doesn't like to eat? Come on, you got to come to New Orleans then for that. We'll take care of you. Oh no, I can't do no seafood because I that, I know no seafood now. I'm allergic. Yeah, but we got more food other than seafood here though. We got real food. We got stuff. Some good food. Yeah, you can have chicken and sausage gumbo. It don't have to be seafood. Come on. Sir, know. there's way there's ways around that. Come on, get it together. To get it together. I just have get to together. Yeah. Fix your palate. Come on. Had to. And you know, I've noticed, I noticed this off subject, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I noticed the other day I was eating some chicken titter. I said, I really hate chicken titters now. Maybe because I'm at that age, or just I, my palate is not yeah. the same. Mm -mm. You didn't grow. You didn't. You didn't grow it up. Yeah, because uh, the breading be too thick. I I don't know. I'm just particular. The bread is too thick. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody said someone did it. Uh, real uh social media. It was like, you real grown when you start eating oxtails and you get away from the chicken tender platters. <laughs> Lift your dirty hands. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you, every time I go to Atlanta, it is a must that I go to Golden Crust. You understand? Hmm. It is something about that oxtail plate with that cabbage and that plantain. And then, hey, bye. <laughs> something about it. I'm telling you. Tell you you grown when you eat oxygen. Oh, you was you was grown. You was real grown. I had the mom says that one time. I said, Oh Jesus, I can't have this every day because I'll get fat. Oh. I already lost I lost that 150 pounds. I ain't trying to go back. God Thank is you. in it. God is in it. You hear me? <laughs> Where, wherever, wherever you see a golden cross, you make sure you stop. Now they have jerk chicken. I like they got jerk. covered, they got covered chicken, they got covered goat, they got all that. But them oxtail. The Lord is in them. Yeah. I got a Baptist feeling. I feel like I gotta preach it. right there. You rocking. Yeah, I feel like praising them right now. I just feel like giving a uh a, a 30 second phrase. Because <laughs> one thing about Big Ben, Big Ben gonna praise him. I run to the other side, run this back. I, just because I'm big don't mean I can praise them. Them big folks, big folks be praising them now. <laughs> <laughs> say just because I'm big don't mean nothing. Wow. Yeah. Like you know how they did by Bree Holly. Bree Holly, you know her you heard of Bree Holly in Faper, right? Let me tell you, she might she's a plus size woman, but that woman can do her thing. I think I just encountered her last last night or night before last. She mm -hmm. sang somewhere and she uh, that girl that's talking about with the long hair. Yeah, yes. Oh, she blessed my entire soul. You hear me? Yes. They be giving the dance moves yeah, and everything. Yeah. So she sings quartet. That's what she does. Yes, ma'am. She sings quartet. Yeah, she a beast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a force to be reckoned with. And some people are jealous of her. Don't be jealous because that's the norm that God gave her. That's so, let her do her thing. And she just as country as all to get out. I know, you know what? I do. But she country and northern because she's from up north. I don't know how she mixed the country with the northern. Is she's there. From, She's from New York, literally. Really? She's from New York. Wow. Yeah, I encountered her maybe two days ago for the first time. I'm like, now who in the ham sandwich is this? <laughs> who is it? Let me she's tell definitely, you. She's a, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. Yes. So, guys, she got some new scene coming out. Guys, she got, y'all need to just t tap in her name. And you see all, she got a plethora. A plethora. I'm Googleable. I'm Googleable. And she got a website. Go to her website. I don't, she got a website. So, so part of the so the decade upgrade that's taking place at Dillard, the shoe line, we talked about that. I'm also launching my mom's um, documentary trailer about her life story, being born and raised on a plantation, picking cotton, having three masters, and wow. going from having a master to a master's degree. My mom is only 69. People think that slavery was years ago. No, this was in the 50s when right. slavery still exists in Mississippi. So we just want to highlight her story, her family story, because when we were doing the research, no record of the plantations exists anymore. There's wow. no record of anything, you know? So no, we're not going to forget this history. We're going to talk about it. So that's taking place. And then I'm releasing all new music. 
Some people know my original song entitled Settle Here. Yeah. So we're redoing Settle Here. We're doing the Settle Here live version. And we included a Spanish version on top of that as well. So your girl gonna be singing in Spanish. Come on, it's Spanish. It's Spanish. Estalante aquí, estalante aquí. Que tu presencia, estalante aquí. Dios, que tu presencia, estalante aquí. Come on, come on, Spanish major. Cause I, I, I'm sorry, I feel Spanish. I had to ask the Lord to help me with Spanish, cause, cause I only speak one language. Let me tell you, I learned, I learned that for this song. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> In my two years of taking Spanish, I've only learned one sentence, and that is, a donde vas de vacaciones? Right. It means, where are you going for vacation? That ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but that's the only sentence I know. So now I just added settle here to my Spanish repertoire. Dos que tu presencia estale aquí, estalante aquí. Yeah. Right. Let me tell y'all, because she got a, her lower range. Oh my gosh. Oh Jesus. It gave me chills. It's a minute ago. And then she can she can sing higher now, guys. She can, and she rapped though. She rapped though. It's like she rap. <laughs> <laughs> so how that rap came about, like I was doing the uh tiny death submission. Right. And I had the song written my that version that you heard was a remix from the original original version of new sound same guy so this was a remake right. and as i was going through the recording i said i feel like i want to rap right here it was like joanna whatever i was like no i feel a bars <laughs> like <Three> bars. <laughs> i feel these bars i was and, and you can see in the video i was holding my phone because i had just wrote it out Maybe it's not maybe, but with God, everything is just see. He had a plan for me. He, I was like, come on, you gotta spit. I come on. <laughs> like like she said, she the Mary J. Blige of the gospel industry. <laughs> that's what they say. That's that's what I've heard. Because when I go on stage to minister, I leave it all on the stage. Yes. I have a I have a problem with fake hair. I can't wear it. I can't wear a wig because I don't want to fall off. I tried the whole quick weave situation and I wanted it out as soon as she put it in because I can't dig in my I can't. Mm -mm. So oh. I'm going to just wear my own hair and sweat my own hair out and just get it done again the next day. And people call me crazy. I don't care. I can't wear that fake stuff. I tried to be grown and do a quick weave and it didn't work. <laughs> I tried to be grown and wear a wig and that didn't work because the lace start pop. Uh -huh, get this away from me. Give me my hair. All right? right. So I wear my own hair and I color it. Okay? And I leave it all on the stage. Well, you don't you see her. Know, you ain't gonna know I'm out of breath, but I be out of breath. <laughs> gotcha. I don't see her hair today. She got it in the cap. She, that means she ain't did it yet. That means she... This is a fresh perm and some pin curls under this hat. Oh yeah, she's saying that she's gonna go somewhere. I just I think that's just tacky to come on here and pin curls. You know, so. I have I'm not saying nobody came on here in an interview with a bonnet, but I see some people go places with bonnets on. <laughs> just pray for them. Just keep them lifted. Guys, y'all need to pre-order her music. Pre-orders start April 26th. It's dropping April 27th. Guys, y'all settle here live. She got Espanol. She gonna have an Espanol version. So y'all gotta get all the Espanols. Y'all can get y'all a version. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> you said that so hard. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I have no idea. Okay. Miss Joanne, where can they get your rest of your music and where they can follow you at? What's your website? They need to stay in contact with you where they can get your business businesses because you got 15,000 of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so everything, I'm Googleable. Joanna Hale McGill, J O A N N A H A L E M C G I L L. That's across the board. 
everything Joanna Hill McGill. And as an artist, that's very important to kind of have your stuff the same because you're going to confuse the church. So keep it the same if you can. Don't be little squeak on this one and then big duck two over here on this one. That's two different people. We don't know. 25 on slaying 25 RGBD. Oh. <laughs> we don't know who is who. So everything across the board is Joanna Hill McGill. If you go to the website, if you're trying to get the shoes, once you go to my website, there's a banner at the top of the shoes. Just click on that. It's going to take you straight to the shoe link uh, for my t-shirt business. That's Joanna's Creations, E-T-C dot com. Um, or you can just call 504-892-1808 and somebody will definitely direct you where you need to be. Come on. Come on. Yeah, she got a PhD. You can tell. Yeah, don't um don't try to FaceTime that number because I won't do it. That's 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 borderline stalker. So just call or text. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all can do it. Gotta send them a link so they can FaceTime you. Let me tell you something. Don't don't come for us because <laughs> see, you understand this Android is apostolic. Okay, I got an Android. It's apostolic. This is apostolic. This Apple is demonic because that forbidden fruit is on the back. Well, it ain't even really say it was really Apple. Just said a fruit, but that bitten apple is on the back of here. You know because people that took the Bible and say what they wanted to say. So mm -hmm. she ate an apple. So the the bitten apple is on the back of the demonic apple phone right here. Yeah, apple, so I had apple. I had to have the best of both worlds because I got tired of getting ribbed by the apple people because I didn't have a I can't send you no videos because the video downgrades when I send it to your Android phone. But I'm gonna get y'all the demonic phone, okay? Right, and we're right. gonna use that. All right, but I'm Team Android all day. Amen. I'm Team Android. Amen. I had an iPhone, but you know it kind of. It broke. It come and it came and had. Um, I let my phone, my friend use it, and she just and it slipped out her hand, and it just popped right open. I was like, "Well, Lord, I guess I don't need an iPhone no more." He said it came in half. Because <laughs> <laughs> that I'm telling you, I, I be telling people iPhones are the devil. It's of the devil. I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. That phone keep popping on in the truck with some kind of country music. And I don't have to turn it off. It's the devil. I don't know. I turn it off, and I'm not about to read the manual to figure it out. I just, I just talk on it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I got one more last thing before we go. Um, what do you give um upcoming indie artists or artists in general some few tips to have a successful career? And because I know there's going to be mess ups, mess ups in the, uh when you do artistry. But what are some tips? Don't sell your soul. Don't do it. Not worth it. No, for real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> be the best carbon copy of you that you can be. There's only one you. Don't try to imitate or be like anybody else. Be the trendsetter. You be you. Let everybody else follow after you. You set the tone. Right. Don't come down for nobody. Know your worth. For me, that was a problem and a struggle for a long time. I didn't know my worth. Right. But once you know your worth, then you're able to really fully understand and embrace who you are. And you can you, you'll walk different when you know your worth. Right. Don't put your head down. Keep your head up. It might not go like you want it to go, but it's going how God wanted it to go. Right. Who are you? Are you the author or is he the author? He said he's the author and the finisher. So allow him to lead and finish, not you. Let go of the will and let him take it. I think that's it. Lift your dirty hands. <laughs> Bless the doers of his words. <laughs> come on, come on. As we pray out, just make sure everybody gives your tithes and offerings. Um, give it to Deacon. Um, uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon, um, uh, too safe. Too safe. Deacon too safe. Deacon too safe. Waterboard. Deacon waterboard. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, well, yeah. I appreciate you. Thank That's you so much. Time.
Cash up, Miss Miss Joanne. Y'all need cash up her. She got her PayPal stuff in our website. Go ahead, cash up her. She just dropped all these tokens. Y'all need to make sure I cash up her. <laughs> this stuff ain't free. We gotta live the life. You know, uh, get, uh gas is uh three seven dollars a, a a gallon, and then eggs six dollars. Big boy, you buy eggs at six dollars. <laughs> That's pandemic prices. And we didn't overcame six dollars. I can't. Oh God. That's funny. Y'all gotta, gotta do right. Y'all gotta do right. If people are gonna give you uh free wisdom, at least drop a, a sow a seed into her ministry now. I don't believe I believe it's dropping a seed now. Drop a seed. And if you don't got it, drop a dollar. A dollar won't hurt you. A dollar won't hurt you. And your account might get in the negative, especially if you don't got the money for it. But, <laughs> but it's okay. God gonna provide. You know, God always provides. He always provides, even when you don't. Got <laughs> That's it. I'm logging off. I'm <laughs> logging off. <laughs> you got you that. Confuse the church. You didn't confuse the church. Oh, if you God. got that fifty cent now, if you take fifty cent. You know that adds up eventually. Yeah, all the coins, know. all the <laughs> coins adds up. Do you put fifty cent in cash up? I ain't never did it before. Yes, you can. Oh, I think I'm gonna send everybody fifty percent. Now I know. <laughs> I'm gonna say this is gonna be a test. I'm gonna test and see if this is gonna come to you. Let me see fifty cents. Oh god, it's gonna cost me more to accept fifty cent. Okay. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop, guys. If y'all don't know, I'm very. I do like to have fun. And I like to joke around. You know, that's that is me. I'm just a jokeable person. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for this interview. Thank uh, you for allowing me to come on. It's been a pleasure. Yes, ma'am. And we got to meet up soon. I'm coming. I'm supposed to be coming to Louisiana for Essence Fest. Uh, my choir is supposed okay. to be at Essence Fest. So okay. uh, I'm excited. So hopefully I get to see you there. If you hopefully you will. I did Essence Fest. Year before last, I was in the convention center. I did so. I, yeah, it's a it's a different experience. I just don't like crowds really too much anymore. It just it heightens my anxiety, which is weird. Um, too many moving people and stuff. Yeah, I don't like large crowds. Yeah. I don't know. It how freaks I'm me out. There. This is my first time ever going to Louisiana. I ain't never been there. Even though my grandmother's from there, but you know. Wow. Uh, I yeah, stay in the it. tourist area, okay? <laughs> stay, in, stay in the tourist area, baby. Don't don't come out. Stay right there, where the, where the tourists be at. I need you to stay there, okay? Oh, don't come oh. out. I, I stay there, and I won't come out. And I just eat me a bag of chips. I I prefer the barbecue chips. You know, I like the like the old lady say, "Call me, you here? <laughs> Give me some pound cake. I will eat a pound cake too. Now, give me a pound cake and some uh some chocolate milk." <laughs> I thought you said you just lost 150 pounds. What you trying to do? Put it back on? Um, I'm maintaining it. You know, you have to exercise. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> you you out of you out of pocket is what you are. Okay. I'm out of order. I'm out, out of pocket. pocket. Wow. <laughs> You're out of pocket, sir. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to stop. I'm gonna need you to not do that. Guys, I'm uh, but it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Yes, ma'am. I thank you so much once again. Y'all go book her now. Y'all need to book her. Yeah, there you go. Book book her, and then Big E um is gonna be my booking manager. So you just contact him, and he'll contact me, and we'll make it work. I done told him. I said I don't know where you find these artists at, but I gotta find some art. My artists are good too, but like I said, I got. <laughs> that ain't what that sound like. You <laughs> find <laughs> that did not sound like that she was about to say my artists are good I'm telling you I got some good artists uh, I have artists in Atlanta I got two artists in Atlanta uh, two in um Houston, Texas and I got one in Alabama and then I got one in North Carolina um, yeah we all over the place we, we that's rock. good okay. yeah, I, I love my artists I really do that's but, good. But we need some more. I just like to add on goodness because y'all got goodness. We uh, I need more goodness like y'all. And come on, my goodness. <laughs> add on goodness. 
add on goodness because I already got goodness, but I need goodness, goodness, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me stop. I can't. Let me stop. <laughs> Guys, y'all be blessed. Thank y'all once again.